Hi there, I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today I have another video for you sharing why I think the most important ink pad to have in your collection is a white pigment ink pad. I've done videos on the many techniques you can do with white pigment ink pads in the past. I'll link to one at the end of this video. But today I have even more ideas for you. These are techniques that you can do with stamps or stencils, and you just need basic white pigment ink pad along with any dye inks. Also be sure to stay tuned at the end of this video, I'll give you a peek at this see-through card front. But let's get started with today's technique using white pigment ink, and we'll start with this card here. All of these cards feature the new Gina K Designs Autumn Splendor Card Kit. There are two reasons I like to use Gina's kits often. The first is the value. There's a lot of products that are reusable in these kits and can be used over and over again at a great price. The second reason is there's usually products of different styles in one kit. So you can make a lot of very different cards from the products inside. This particular kit has a large six by eight stamp set a pattern paper pad that has uh, eight, eight different patterns, but three sheets of each. There's also these ephemera pack, which are printed ephemera. There's 432 pieces there, along with a coordinating die. I'll show you that later. Six individual ink cubes, a thanks die along with the shadow die, and four layering stencils. A lot is included here. I'll be using all of these for different style cards today. Before we get started with the cards, I did want to show you a closer look at the six ink cubes in this kit. We have three orchid colors, light, medium, and dark orchid, then three lilac colors, light, medium, and dark lilac. You can see these beautiful colors here, and they really fit in between the other Gina K ink colors, especially the lilac colors. They're kind of a bluish purple that are just beautiful, and they all work well together. If you're interested in ink swatch downloads, I have added those to my ink swatch downloads. You can go check those out on my blog for free. Okay, so now that we've looked at these inks, let's get started with our cards. For my first cards, I'll be using the six by eight stamp set that is included in that kit. It has these beautiful intricate stamps along with a great thanks sentiment and Thanksgiving and lots of little words that you can team up with that. The kit also includes a die that cuts out the word thanks or matches up with the die cut thanks. I like that there are both options. You can either, either stamp thanks or die cut it and have a shadow for it. You'll see that in action later on. Let's do the stamping on this card first. For this, I have a piece of dark craft cardstock that I've cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. We'll trim it down later, but this is a good size to start with. I'm drawing a center line right down at the center at two and an eighth of an inch using a T-ruler. Then I will draw another line at the center in the other direction. This one's at two and three quarter inches. This will give me the center lines of the card up and down. Another way you can do this is to create a template. That way you don't have to measure every time for the center lines. Now I showed this in a video a while back. I'll link it up here on the top right. You can see my template here, it's blue. You make it once and it's ready to go over and over. It is also the same size and I cut those little notches in the halfway point on the sides. Now I just have to layer, lay it over my cardstock background, make the little dots in the notches and then connect them with any kind of ruler. And that is another way to find those center lines. Again, I'll link to that video on the top right. Doesn't matter which method you do. Now I have my MISTI stamping tool. Any stamp positioner will work for this. I am placing my cardstock in there. You can see the pencil lines on it. Then I'm taking the smaller leaf from the six by eight stamp set in that Gina K Designs Autumn Splendor Kit. And I'm putting it up there on the top right corner, allowing it to be between the pencil lines up there, but overlapping a little bit from that center line. Just to be clean, I am putting a post-it note along that vertical line, pencil line there, just so I stay in that top right corner. You could totally skip that if you want. Now I'm inking this up with Gina K Designs White Pigment Ink. This is the type of ink pad that I think everyone should have, and I'll show you fun techniques with it today. There are many great white pigment inks out there. I'm using Gina K Designs today, and you can see how nice and bright and white that is. Now I'll take the same piece and rotate it in my stamping tool so I'm stamping in the opposite corner. 
I again will put down the mask along the pencil line and stamp with the white pigment ink. Now something that's very important to note about white pigment ink, it is a pigment ink. That is a wet kind of uh, mushy kind of sticky ink that sits on top of the paper. So it will stay wet for a while. Now that's a good thing because you could put embossing powder on it and do heat embossing. But if you want it to dry, you want to heat set it. That's really the best way to make sure it's dry and you don't smear it. So I like to heat, heat set it every time I stamp in today's video. Now I'm positioning the same stamp in the other corner. Once I have it lined up to kind of be symmetrical, I will stamp this with the same white pigment ink in the opposite two corners. This is one of the advantages, many advantages, of having a stamping tool. You can get these symmetrical looks by using the stamping tool. If you don't have a stamping tool, you could definitely just stamp the leaf in all four corners using an acrylic block. Once I've heat set all of this ink, I'll use my eraser to erase those pencil lines. Now it's time for the technique and we're gonna add color to this. For this, you can use absolutely any dye inks that you may have. I'm using Gina K Designs dye inks today because her color palette is beautiful. It includes pretty much everything you could need. We're gonna do some offset stamping with these colors. So I'm taking the same leaf image and lining it up with our first white stamped leaf. Then I will just shift the stamp towards the center just a little bit. So just down into the side a little bit. And then I will close the door on my stamping tool to grab that stamp. And now we will ink up the stamp with the spruce ink. Now when I stamp this, it'll be offset from the white ink, which gives us a really cool look. Some of that green lands on the brown paper. Some lands on top of the white pigment ink. So you'll get two different tones. When it lands on the brown paper, it's dark. When it lands on top of the white, it sits on top of it and looks softer, giving a really cool offset look. Now I'm rotating it and doing it the same on the other corner using a different green color. Absolutely any dye inks will work here. Now we'll take the leaf off, clean it up, and line it up with the other white image and then shift it a little bit down and in so it's offset just a little bit. Close the door on the misty and stamp it with another colored of dye ink. So what's happening here is when you stamp with dye ink, it absorbs into the paper. So anything that's hitting the brown paper directly will absorb and get dark there. But any of this dye ink that lands on top of the white pigment ink can't really absorb because that white pigment ink is under it. It's kind of sitting on top of the paper. So it looks lighter there. Now I first stamped that with a honey mustard color and it wasn't bright enough. So I stamped it again with tangerine twist. And now we have these bright colors sitting on top of the white pigment ink, but slightly offset so you get that dark shadow look. It really steps up this image and gives it a fun, unique look. I want to trim this down a little bit, so I'm using my Gina K Designs Master Layouts 2 die set. In the set, there is a rectangle with faux stitching on the inside edge, and a slightly bigger rectangle that you can use to mat this piece. I'm using the smaller one with the faux stitching to cut out this piece. These dies are very helpful if you struggle with getting measurements just right. It does the thinking for you. Now I cut that with the smaller die, and then I cut two or three additional white die cuts from that same die, and I'm gluing it behind the brown one for dimension. You could totally skip that if you want. I then use the slightly larger rectangle die to cut from white cardstock, and that creates a nice mat for it. And I glued that behind our stacked brown piece. For sentiment, I'm using the older Gina K Designs Bold and Blooming stamp set. I really like the bold sentiments in here and the Hello Friend fit nicely between. I'm putting that into my Misty stamping tool. I'll use my anti-static powder tool. Then I will stamp the sentiment with Versamark ink. And I will stamp that two or three times. I think one of the best reasons to have a stamping tool is so that you can stamp multiple times before adding embossing powder. If your ink pad isn't very juicy, you can be sure that by stamping a few times, you get enough ink transferred that more of the embossing powder will stick. I will then add my Gina K Designs Detail White Embossing Powder over that and heat set it. And now we have a bold white sentiment at the center of the stamping. 
Now, for me, it's hard not to add much else to this, but I decided to skip any embellishments and I glued all of that panel onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white top folded note card. And I feel like this has enough with that unique offset stamping with the white pigment ink. That's all you need. You could add some gems or maybe some little twine bows at the base of each leaf, totally up to you. But notice how you have the dark color right along the edges of the white stamping. And then you have that overlapping of lighter color. Such a fun, unique look that I've done in many videos. Again, check out the video I link up here on the top right for more ideas for this. My next card shows the same technique, but a simpler version. I think sometimes people think techniques have to take more time or be more complicated. This is an example that shows the opposite. So I have a piece of dark green cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I want to line this stamp up on the top half. So I have my template in there so I know where that halfway horizontal line is. You could do a pencil line if you want, if you measure it out but I have this leaf along the top center. I'll close the door on my stamping tool and then remove the template. I also am going to put a post-it note on the bottom half. You could totally skip this if you want, but I wanted to have a kind of clean break along that center point. Now, the reason I use a dark color cardstock here is it makes this technique a little more impactful. Either use dark or medium color cardstock. It kind of gets lost on a light cardstock, but more medium or dark would be best. I would say a more medium shade. You'll see the difference here in a moment. I can heat set that and then rotate my cardstock and stamp it again with the same white pigment ink. Notice I'll stamp twice just to get more intense white, but you could stamp it once if you prefer. Again, you can see how a stamping tool is really helpful to get this symmetrical look. So now I'll heat set this side also. We'll do the offset stamping once again. I'll put my post-it note on top to mask off the bottom. You really don't have to do that. But now instead of moving the stamp, I'm going to offset my cardstock a little bit. I'm just shifting the cardstock up a little bit in my stamping tool. Again, this is an advantage of a stamping tool, but you can use an acrylic block and stamp this next image right on top, but slightly offset down. So I'm stamping this with a spruce ink. So it is about the same color as the background. And when I stamp this on top, some of the color will go underneath, creating a darker halo that will absorb into the cardstock. But some of the green stamping will end up right on top of the white, giving a lighter look. So it gives a really cool effect. All right. So now here we have the rotated piece, put the mask on top, slightly shift that green piece up a tiny bit in your stamping tool. Stamp this with the darker green ink. I realized I hadn't shifted it enough, so I'm going to do it again. Shift it up a little bit more. Stamp it again with green, and there we have that offset look. So now I have the same thing at the top and the bottom of my card. It is a great way to take that leaf stamp and give it a completely different look. This shows that this technique doesn't have to be complicated or time consuming. Okay, now let's trim that green down to be narrow at the center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I'm using the Gina K Designs Master Layouts 10 die set. This is really meant for slimline cards. You can see those tall, narrow rectangle dies, but it also works for these cards. Now my green panel is only five and a half inches tall, but I'm using this tall die here to cut from the center. So now we have faux stitching on the inside edge on the left and the right, and it's five and a half inches tall. I repeated that process on some other pieces of green cardstock, so they're the same size. And I'm putting glue on those and gluing them behind our stamped piece. I like to use the corner of my Misty stamping tool to make sure that these pieces are stacked nicely evenly on top of each other. This gives me some stack dimension behind our stamped piece so it stands out on the front of our card, but you could skip that if you want. Now that die set also includes a slightly larger rectangle die, and I use that for some gold mirror cardstock. And I'm gluing that right behind our stacked stamp piece, and then I'll glue that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. That gold piece will stick out a little bit on the left and the right, and it matches the gold cardstock I used on the thanks die cut. 
Now this thanks die cut is included in that kit that I showed you earlier. I cut the thanks from gold cardstock and glued it onto the shadow that I cut from white cardstock. There you can see that fun technique in the background. Because I used a green dye ink that matched my green cardstock, you can't really see the dark around it anymore, but you still get the cool effect. If you want the effect to be more intense or stand out more, use a darker dye ink on top, like the dark spruce ink. Then it'll stand out much more, but I wanted a subtle look on this particular card. Also remember you could use different colors of ink. We have a green cardstock. I could have done like a brown or orange or red ink on top and that would give a cool effect like we did on our first card. All right, let's move on to another technique. This still involves offset stamping with white pigment ink, but this time we're gonna create a wreath and it gives an amazing result. For this, I'm using the Gina K Wreath Builder. Now Gina K has a new large wreath builder. It came out many months ago and I've done one video using it. I'll link to it up here on the top right. And it's great for making larger cards or card panels you can trim down in different ways. For a really close up look on how to use these templates, check out that video. But today I'm gonna to show you how to make a large card panel you can trim down. I'm putting the large outside template into the corner of my Misty stamping tool. I like to put a piece of tape over on the side so it doesn't shift as we create. I have cut a piece of medium color cardstock to be five and three quarter inches wide by seven inches long. This is my go-to size for this wreath builder. I'm also drawing a pencil line at five and three quarter inches along the long end. I will put pieces of tape right along those pencil lines on the other side of the pencil line and fold it over on the side. This will just be helpful while we do the wreath building stamping. You'll see in a moment. Everything above that yellow line is square, five and three quarters by five and three quarter inches. Okay, now I'm gonna take this piece and put it into our wreath builder that's already set up in our Misty stamping tool. I'm starting in this top right corner. That's usually where I like to work. If you want to, you can take this center template piece and center it up on those corners. You can see the corner on the top and the corner on the right. See how it's kind of centered up there with the black showing. Once that's centered there, anything in that center point right there would be the center of our wreath. That helps with getting things positioned, but I'm telling you, you really can just eyeball it. I'm putting this flower stamp from the kit right in this top right corner here along that black line, kind of along the diagonal, but you could eyeball it. I promise it works even if you eyeball it. The, using that little template there helps you to realize how big of an opening will be inside of your wreath. I then close the door on my Misty stamping tool to grab the stamp Remove that template and now we can start stamping. It's easy from here on out. Now I will stamp this with the white pigment ink. I like to double stamp just to make it more intense, but you can stamp it once if you prefer. If you have an older white ink pad, they dry up pretty quickly. So you can either get a reinker or stamp it multiple times to make it more intense. Usually I do once or twice if I have a newer ink pad or a freshly re-inked ink pad. So I stamped that once and now watch, I'm going to rotate that corner one turn. So see I'm turning it one turn in the wreath builder and then I will repeat the process of stamping twice with white pigment ink. After I've stamped that twice, I will rotate it one turn once again. So watch, I turn it one time and did the template, it fits right in and then I will stamp it twice with white pigment ink. The wreath builder can look overwhelming, but it's easy. So here I'm turning it again, stamping it twice with white pigment ink. Now the wreath builder can be used to create many different looks. You can do backgrounds by stamping repeatedly, kind of moving out from the center, but here I'm sticking with a basic wreath. Again, check out the video on my top right here because it gives a lot more ways to use the template. So I continue to rotate one turn and double stamp with white pigment ink. Now this time, watch, I'm starting to turn it, but there's no corner over there on the right to put into the template. That's where those yellow pieces of tape that we put on that five and three quarter inch mark come handy. I'm gonna put that little corner right there between the yellow and the edge, right into the edge of the template. Then I can do the stamping. Because remember, this cardstock's a little bit wider instead of square. 
Usually you want to use a square piece in this template, but I made it wider so it hangs out there on the right. So by lining up with that yellow tape, you can be sure it keeps the pattern going. I'm rotating it again and that corner in the top fits into the template and we can stamp our final image here. Again, if you want to see this in closer look, slower look, check out the video that I have linked in the top right. Once I'm done, I will heat set that all so that white ink absorbs into the cardstock and dries. I don't want to smear it. I'm taking our panel now and putting it in the original position in the wreath builder. And I'm also taking the stamp and lining it up with our first image, but offset, so it's turned. The center of the flower is in the same place, but the petals this time are in between the petals we stamped before. So I'm just rotating a little bit in the same position. Once I have that position, I will stamp this now with the medium orchid ink from Gina K Designs. I'll stamp that right on top of the white pigment ink and then rotate one turn in the wreath builder and stamp it again. So I'm stamping this darker ink on top of the white, but it's offset by rotating it. Before we offset by just shifting it a little bit, this time we did a rotation of the stamp, which gives that darker ink some room to kind of overlap between the white petals. I'm gonna pause here because my son came in and asked me for a hug. And as I hugged him, watch what he does. He waves at the camera. I just had to show you that. 16 year olds, teenagers can be awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna continue here. Each time I'm rotating it one more turn in the wreath builder and then stamping it, actually double stamping it with that orchid ink. Now I do recommend cleaning off your stamp every time you stamp on top of white pigment ink. The reason I clean off my stamp with a dry cloth is sometimes when you stamp on top of the white pigment ink, ink it picks up some of that white pigment ink and you don't want to transfer that onto your colored ink pad you can remove it by dragging it on cardstock but by wiping it off in between each stamping you can be sure you'll be okay so I continue to rotate my cardstock in the wreath builder template until we get this great offset overlapping ink of colored ink on top of white pigment ink I will heat set that because we're stamping on top of white pigment ink. We want it to absorb and look at that cool result. Now the one on the left I did by creating a wreath where the flower started out more towards the edge of the cardstock and the wreath builder. And I started with a five and three quarter by five and three quarter inch piece. But I do recommend starting with the bigger piece like we did on the right, because watch. I can cut this panel down to be offset on the center of a card because the panel is bigger to begin with. So you could have the center of the wreath towards the corner or towards the center. This one on the left that started out square, you're pretty limited to having the center of the wreath at the center of the card. Again, if you want to learn more about this, video is linked up here on the top right. Now here is the panel I just created. I trimmed it down and I added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I added the thanks sentiment to the center using the dies included in that Autumn Splendor card kit. I also white heat embossed a sentiment underneath it to give it a more complete look. And I did add some little purple uh, jewels to the center of those flowers to give it a bit of sparkle. Here's the other version that I did off screen on a lighter pink cardstock. I trimmed that down so that the center of the wreath is the center of our card panel and added it to a note card. I again white heat embossed a sentiment underneath the thanks and added gemstones to the flowers. I love that offset stamping, that overlap look with white pigment ink and colored ink. If you would have used two different colors of ink for that offset, it would look kind of messy. But by doing the first layer with white pigment ink and then a colored dye ink on top offset, you get a really fun detailed look that doesn't end up messy. Next, I wanted to show you how you can use white pigment ink along with stencils to create a fun look, similar to the stamping, but even better. I'm using the four layering stencils from the Gina K Designs Autumn Splendor Kit that I showed you at the beginning, but you could use a single stencil for this if you prefer. I'm just using layering stencils because it gives us such a dynamic look. I have pieces of cardstock that are cut to six by six inches. I have two medium colors and one darker navy color, just to show you how this technique varies depending on the shade of cardstock you're using. 
On one of the cardstock pieces, I'm stamping a background stamp first. This is the Simon Says Stamp Friendship Text Background. Any background stamp would work here. I like this one because it's such a detailed, tiny print. I'm stamping this with the Tone on Tone color. This is the Medium Orchid ink from Gina K Designs. I just thought this would look neat on the background, but my other two card examples do not have the stamping on the background, so it's not necessary. Just wanted to show you the variation. Now I'm taking that piece of cardstock and putting it into the corner of my Waffle Flower mini stencil mat. You don't have to do this, but the stencil mat has a little corner where you can tuck your cardstock, and then you can tuck each of your stencils in that corner and you know they'll line up. You could also just tape it in place and line it up on your own. I'm using a Gina K Designs blending brush that I have dedicated to white pigment ink. I am dabbing the brush into the white pigment ink and then tapping it over the stencil openings and then I'm rubbing it into place. The reason I dab it first and then rub it into place is I don't want to pick up any of the colored stamping behind it and get it on my brush and therefore onto the ink pad. Once I'm done I can remove that and look at that bright white ink over the color. Let's do this on the next piece. I'm going to do three backgrounds at once. So I do the same step on each of them. Here I'm dabbing the white ink over it and then rubbing it over. I do like to take a dry cloth to get off the excess ink so we don't have like clumps of ink in the corner of the stencil. Because remember, white pigment ink is a little juicier. So it tends to build up on the edges of the stencil. By dabbing it off first, you can remove that. So now we have the white pigment ink of the first layer of the stencil on each of our backgrounds. I will now heat set this. Again, you want that white pigment ink to dry completely before you move on to any steps because you risk smearing it. I'm now putting that cardstock piece back into the corner of my stencil mat and coming in with the next stencil, which does the leaves. Over these leaf openings, I'm dabbing the white pigment ink. Any kind of blending brush or inking tool would work here. And I'm applying that white pigment ink pretty thick over those openings and then kind of smearing it around and heat setting it. So now we have our flowers and our leaves, the first layer of each of those, done in white pigment ink. And I'll heat set that and I'll do that to all three of my backgrounds. Now it's time to add some color, but offset on top of the white. So I'm going back to that first flower stencil, the same one we used at the beginning, but I'm shifting it down a little bit. Watch, I'm going to take it and shift it down a little bit. So you see some dark cardstock showing along the bottom openings of the stencil. There we have it positioned. And now I have a pink ink blending brush. Any ink blending brush or tool will work here. And I'm dabbing a dark pink ink. This is the medium orchid from Gina K Design. I'm dabbing that over the openings. Notice that every once in a while I'll wipe my brush off onto a dry cloth. That's in case I pick up any of that white pigment ink on my cardstock. I don't want to transfer that to my pink ink pad. So once I've dabbed it on top, I kind of blend it around and remove it. And there we have offset stenciling because I offset the stencil first before adding the darker color. I'm doing the same here. I've offset the stencil just a tiny bit and I'm adding the medium uh, lilac color on top of this blue background. I dab a bunch down over the openings and then I kind of smooth it around with the blending tool and look at that. You get this fun white halo along the top and a dark halo along the bottom. Before we did offset stamping, now we're doing offset inking with the stencil. And here is the final one. On this one, I did the medium lilac color towards the base of the flowers. And then I came in with the medium orchid color towards the tips of the flower petals. So you could do multiple colors here. This color is mostly landing on top of that white pigment ink. So the color will show up against that dark cardstock. If I would have taken this orchid color and put it on the navy cardstock directly, you wouldn't see it. But because we put the white pigment ink there first, we see it. All right, now that I've done the flowers, I'm going to take the layering stencil for the leaves, put it on top and slightly offset it down a bit, and put the medium spruce dye ink on top. Whatever dye ink you put on top will be subtle, but you can see it gives a lot of color. If you want it to be more intense, this layer you could do in Distress Oxide ink, which will show up a little bit more. But I really like the white pigment ink first and then a colorful dye ink on top. There's something really beautiful about that subtle color with the white halo around it on this dark cardstock. 
All right, now it's time for the next layer of each of these. So this is the next stencil that does layering on the flowers. So I'm lining that up directly with the flowers we've already done and putting white pigment ink over it. Just like we applied the white pigment ink in the first place, we're just putting white pigment ink over the flowers we've already done, which gives that beautiful highlight. And again, I'll heat set it. I always heat set my white pigment ink after I use it. I will do that on the other pieces also. So I'm lining the stencil up with our first inking right in the corner of the mat. Now it's time for the fourth and final stencil. This allows you to create the details on the leaves. I'm lining that right up with the original stamping and applying white pigment ink on top of what we've already done. And I'll heat set that. So that white pigment ink is on top of the other layers already, just making it softer there. And I'm doing it to all of those pieces always heat setting after we do the white inking. Then we can take that stencil and watch, I'm gonna shift it down a little bit and then apply the dark spruce ink, so a darker green here. So this is going on top of all the ink we've already done, but slightly offset. So there'll be a darker shadow along the bottom and some of the original color will show above it. I'm also using honey mustard ink to the, for the center of the flowers. And look at all that color building up. I love this effect, especially when it's on these darker colors of cardstock. This is something that's hard to achieve on white cardstock. Here I'm putting the dark orchid color over the flower petals on this one. You could even come in with a little bit of the dark lilac to add another color towards the base of the flowers too. All of this dye ink is sitting on top of all the other inking we've done so you can see that true color even though we're on dark color cardstock. So here I'm again shifting this stencil slightly down and applying darker ink over the white pigment ink we've already done but offset. So this is the dark lilac and I'll put a little bit of the dark orchid towards the top of the petals and look at this beautiful result. So all I'm doing here is using stencils first with white pigment ink, drying it, then offsetting it and inking with the colored dye ink. I happen to be using a layering stencil set here, but you could do it with a regular stencil. Take any regular stencil, ink it up with white pigment ink, dry it, then offset it a bit and do a colorful dye ink. And that will give you gorgeous results, a dimensional look. This happens to be more impactful because I used a layering stencil set. All right, so now I'm gonna heat set this completely. All of them heat set them, make sure they're dry. And here we have the three panels plus another one that I created off screen. I love the different looks on the different colors of cardstock. I trimmed those backgrounds down and added them to white note cards that are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This first one is where we first stamped with that background stamp and then did the inking on top. I love how those words kind of surround our flowers and the ink on top kind of mutes them. It just adds to the look of the card. You can see the white halo along the top of our flowers and the darker halo below the flowers, giving kind of a highlight and shadow look. On all of the cards, I cut the thanks shadow die from white cardstock and the word thanks itself from black glossy cardstock and glued them together. I like how that stands out against the bold backgrounds. And I also white heat embossed a sentiment from the stamp set in the kit underneath it. I did finish each of the cards off with some pearls just to give it a little bit of shine. Here you can see what this looks like on a darker color cardstock. You really could use any colors of cardstock for this. I do like, again, the medium and darker colors best. On here, I used a plum color cardstock from Gina K Designs. Then I used the white pigment ink along with the lilac ink pad on top of it for the flowers and the spruce for the leaves. I hope all of these examples show you that by putting down a layer of white pigment ink first, either with a stamp or a stencil, and then putting a layer of colored dye ink on top, but offset will give such beautiful results. Add this look of dimension and really step up your stamping. But again, I can't say it enough. Be sure to check out my other video that shows lots of ways of using white pigment ink creatively and shows why it's such an important ink pad to have in your collection. Now, before we go, I wanted to show you another card I created using this Autumn Splendor kit from Gina K Designs, but completely different look. I just wanted to show it because I think these products are really creative. 
This is actually a see-through card front. For this, I used this pack of ephemera that's included in the kit. Look at how many are in here. It cuts hundreds of pieces. What you do is you take one of the pieces and use the coordinating die that's included in the kit to cut out all of those pieces at once. So you can do this with each of the sheets and you end up with these die cuts that look like you watercolored them, but really, it's all done for you. And if you're like me and struggle with watercolor, this is a huge time saver. So I die cut a bunch of these to use on this card today, but I still have lots left over to make future cards. And by the way, I didn't use it, but I wanted to show you that that kit has this six by six pattern paper pad that matches those die cuts, beautiful papers. That's also included in the kit. But what I did is I used those die cuts to create a see-through card front. See how you can see through between the die cuts that I glued together, along with the sentiment on the top? And there's still a place where you can write a personal message on the inside. Now, I don't have time to show in this long video how to create this card, but if you guys are interested, I did film it and I can turn it into a video that shows the steps to do it. Let me know if you're interested in the comments below and I'll show that. But I did want to just give you a quick look at this card today so you could see the different styles all available in the one kit. All right, I hope this card inspires you to break out your white pigment ink pad and create some colorful backgrounds with it. It's really a great way to step up your stamps or your stencils. I will link to all the supplies I used in my description below. And at the end here, I will link to a couple other videos, including one that has lots of white pigment ink ideas. Thank you for spending this time with me. I'll see you soon and have a wonderful week.